GeoGebra allows us to define three-dimensional functions, 3D curves, and surfaces in 3D. So defining a function of two variables is pretty intuitive. We define it in a similar way we would do with a function of one variable. So for example, we could do f of x comma y, so this function f takes two inputs. We could output cosine of x, and then maybe we'll do squirt or square root of y. So when I hit enter, now we've got the surface, or this uh, the graph of this function f. And again, we can change properties of this, like we could change the color and the opacity of this. And now we've got the graph of f in three dimensions. So this is really nice for exploring three-dimensional functions. Okay, I'm going to delete this. And we're going to move on to looking at three-dimensional curves. To do this, we actually have to use a GeoGebra function called curve. So if I go ahead and go to the input bar and start typing curve, we've got a couple options, but they look about the same. So the curve function will take an expression, which will be an expression for the x-coordinate, an expression for the y-coordinate, expression for the z-coordinate, and then we choose the parameter variable and where that starts at and where that ends at. So let's look at a specific example of this, and it'll make more sense. So we'll do, let's say c equals curve, and we'll let the x-coordinate be cosine of 3t, y-coordinate will be sine of 3t, z-coordinate will be just t itself, and then we'll use t as our parameter variable, and we'll let that vary from 0 to 2 pi. Now when I hit enter, we notice that we get this three-dimensional curve in our 3D graphics view. And we also get a nice little um, like algebraic representation of this curve in the algebra view. I think this is a newer function of GeoGebra, but this shows us a little bit of the mathematics, which is nice. I'm going to go ahead and delete this curve, and we'll move on to surfaces. So like curves, we have to use a specific GeoGebra function called surface to create a surface. So to do this, let's, let's use the surface command to create a cylinder. So we'll do s equals surface. And if we look at the um, tooltip, we see that we need an x expression, a y expression, a z expression. We get a first parameter and a starting and ending value. And then we get a second parameter with a starting and ending value. So we might type something like, let's do 2 times cosine of u, 2 times sine of u, and then we'll do v. Now we want 0, our u, to vary from 0 to 2 pi, and then we want v to vary from 0 to, say, 4. Now there's some mathematics there, and I'll leave it to you to understand why the mathematics that I have there is generating this cylinder. But when I hit enter, we get this nice cylinder in the 3D graphics view. And this is pretty neat. We can zoom around, we can change aspects of this, and we can even put a top onto the cylinder. So maybe we'll do top equals a surface, and we'll say v times cosine of u, v times sine of u, and we want the z-coordinate to always be 4. We'll let u vary from 0 to 2 pi, and v needs to vary from 0 to 2. There's some mathematics there, but I won't talk about it here. So I'll hit enter, and now we've got a cylinder with the top to it. Now if we click on one of these um, surfaces, if it lets me click on one, so we'll click on this, and notice that there's a set line style, and by default, it's showing these uh, grid lines on the surface. You might not want that, so you can set this line style to zero to hide the lines on that surface. So I'll do it for both of these so that we get a smoother looking picture. So now we've got a cylinder that's brown that has a green top on it. 